So equipment staff guys never get any love outside of the building, within the building. Some of the most appreciated guys that truly deserving of that. Uh, the work that, and time that they put in, uh, they're here before us, they're here after us. They pack up the trucks, they do all the stuff, like the hard workload uh, behind the scenes. I mean, you're cleaning up Monday after the game and the boys are washing clothes and getting those prepped and ready to go. And really Tuesday on the player day off, we start packing again, getting ready for the next game. Jimmy's my helmet and shoulder pad guy. Jeff is my entire clothing guy. Corey preps footballs and does practice. Our interns, Alex and Zach, phenomenal what they do. And they do all the pre-prep packing during the week. So they do a phenomenal job. I have the best crew. Thanksgiving was just here and I couldn't be more thankful for these guys because I do, I think, have the best crew in the league. We continue throughout the whole week, um, just getting ready for game day. Just going through every helmet in the locker room. Checking the pieces, the parts, the screws, chin strap clip, every, every little part of the helmet itself. Working on Baker and Jarvis here. I want everything to just look really nice. It looks good, it's safe, it's ready to go. Finish it off, get it ready for game day. That's our job. Our job is just get you ready for the game. Make it look good. With Baker, quarterbacks, defensive players, linebackers that have our speaker system the helmet so that the coach can communicate with them. Um, each of those helmets have to be designated. You have to be able to pick them out on the field with the green dot on the back of the helmet. You see his chaps, Hick, always using that. It's become almost like a, a habit, a tradition that he's had. I am the worst person at losing my chapstick. I mean, I go through, I don't know how many a year, it's the one chapstick that I actually don't lose. I know where it's at at all times, it's in my helmet. It's, it's a lucky little spot for me, but I don't even have to worry about my helmet. Jeff does such a good job on the sideline. I, I, if I have a beanie on, he's ready with my helmet. I'll take my beanie off, give him, I got my superstitious, give him the beanie first, grab the helmet, give him knuckles, but he always has it regardless. He, he'll find me, um, so I never have to worry about grabbing my helmet. He's, he's ready on the spot. Right now we're just getting the shoulder pads taped for the game on Sunday. Um, say probably about 35 guys on the team prefer tape on the pads. Uh, it's standard all O linemen, D linemen, linebackers, and then after that it's pretty much a decision by the player whether it's a running back or receiver that likes it. Um, the reason they like the tape is it just gives a little bit more stick to the jersey on the shoulder pads. And then, you know, when you're playing, a guy can't really grab the material and pull, and pull you by it because that jersey, it just stays right there on the pad. It doesn't go anywhere. Everything's smaller, everything's lighter because that's, you know, that's what, what the guys want. They want to feel as light as possible out there. They don't want to be, you know, bogged down by a heavy pair of shoulder pads. And through, through many, many years of doing this, you kind of learn a few tricks to make it a little quicker. I think when I first started, taking about eight minutes to put one jersey on a pair of pads because it would stick in the wrong places and I couldn't get it lined up but I think I finally got a method that that works yeah you just kind of line it up inside out flip it over and then you're just kind of really looking for the main points get the number on top of the shoulders get the stripes straight that's pretty much it Corey dealing with the quarterbacks, the, the most needy group of the team, uh, of all the footballs that Corey has to get prepared, um, get them in, prep them. I mean, I, I don't think everybody realizes the way they come in, they are not like even close to being ready to be used. The way you're breaking in QB balls by just mudding it, brushing it, and taking care of the leather. Well, we're getting that feel of a ball that's been used for a month, and this ball has never been practiced with. So those are the three stages. This is straight out of the box. This is after it's been mudded, the mud is dried, and I've taken it to the wheel. And then this is after we've hand brushed it. Mud the ball is to basically break in the football. So it's not a brand new football straight out of the box where it might have more of a waxy feel to it or the ball just feels harder than quarterback. So they're broken in more and it has that older feel to it but still has like the texture and feel of a brand new football. All right, so now we can go onto the wheel. So I ended up taking off the guard. You can remove the actual grinding wheel itself and you can put different brush heads on it. I actually put a spacer on it, duct taped it, and I super glued it on. But now it makes scrubbing a football 
to almost complete in 10 minutes instead of a half hour to 45 minutes. It, it, at the end of the day, it's got to be a football good enough to get played in the game. Yeah. Currently, to date, including preseason, I think my ball count is 184 footballs that we've made for game day in the equipment room. Uh, the new fad in the NFL is if you get a turnover to keep the football. And so anytime we have turnovers, we lose footballs. Previous week we had our touchdown celebrations were to give away footballs. So when they give them away or we lose them because of turnovers, that means another ball that we have to make this week. Like there's part of an equipment room out there more so than what people see us doing. It gives us a sense of, you know, we do matter and we're, we're contributing to the team in the best way that we can. It's a different feeling when you have a football that's been worked on and prepped by him. Um, it goes into it that, you know, that, that grip of when you have it, you just feel confident. And, and to me, that's a big part of my game is feeling good about it when the ball's in my hand. Um, just, you know, having that belief that this is the football that's going to win us the game. This is the ball that they're going to catch because it feels perfect. It's going to be snap perfect. And Corey, he does all that behind the scenes. Right now, this loading dock's kind of actually in a scramble because the trucks arrived and we have practice approaching soon, but we have a full checklist here of everything that we're gonna put on the truck for game day. And we're just getting it all prepared and making it as easy for our truck drivers to load it in a proper form. You know, in our preparation, trying to get ready for the Steelers, it, it was really more uh, our focus just on the game itself. You know, everybody was talking about the previous game, and, but we wanted to make sure that we went in, you know, really trying to be disciplined. With what had happened, it's very difficult to not, for people not to want to bring up and look back. And our message was to look forward. The same message from Freddie and our staff was 1-0 this week. and. We're always trying to prove ourselves. It's 6.30 and we're grinding out. See with the King Lawler sign? Jerry the King Lawler, that was years ago. We get here six hours before the game. You know, some teams vary, but it's, everybody's usually right in that norm. But you know, this is what we like to do. Just unpacking some player bags right now. Uh, we pack each player's gear, cleats, shoulder pads, helmets, and bags for each game. So now that it's game day, it's time to get there ready. There had some rain yesterday. I think uh, some rain came in late last night. I think it's supposed to let up about 10 o'clock today. It's more of a cold weather game, you know, because you got to take care of guys like Bob Myers over here. It gets cold real easy. <laughs> so what we need to do is take care of him. By the way, Bob, I don't have that heater on the sideline. Oh, <laughs> You can't say that. You can say that. I think it varies, you know, from the, our plane loads that we've had before, like on a normal regular season game compared to a cold weather game, you would roughly go from probably 17,000 pounds to 20, 21,000. So this is our coach's uh, locker room for the game here in Pittsburgh and I'm just starting to set up uh, all their gear, all their pre-game gear, game gear. Uh, we'll pull out some rain gear, some thermals, anything we may need, um, depending on the weather that we're gonna get today here in Pittsburgh. This is our inflation station. It'll set up all the footballs, the proper PSI and whatever we have it set to. League rules mandate that it's between 12.5 and 13.5. And we will set it to 12.7. And then the officials, they look at every ball, they make sure all the balls pass inspection, no funny business is one done to them. And then, like I said, they check the inflation on them. So every player and coach has rain gear, warm weather gear. You can't forget anything for anyone. And I, really our job is if you miss somebody, you fail, so we don't like to fail.